attack against England in Belfast next Wednesday is Rovers Jimmy Quinn especially as Billy Hamilton is injured Oxford will miss Hamilton today and they're aware it was Quinn's goal that put them out of the FA Cup his teammate Noel Brotherston is also in the Irish squad and both have escaped the flu virus which hit the Rovers camp this week Terry Geno and Glenn Keeley have recovered but Colin Randall hasn't so John Lowey wears number eight up front, Simon Garner is preferred to Chris Thompson. Garner, one of three players there, signed by Jim Smith when he was manager here at Ewood Park. Well, nowadays, Jim's signing players for Oxford. At number three, 20-year-old Tony Spearing has just come on loan from Norwich for a month because Bobby MacDonald is injured. And at number nine, Hamilton's absence means Jeremy Charles makes his second appearance since arriving from Queen's Park Rangers for £100,000. Today's referee is Peter Willis, who took charge of both Liverpool-York FA Cup ties. Oxford starting their fifth consecutive away match in the league. The weather has rather interrupted their rhythm. They've lost the last two, wearing yellow. And it's the fifth time this season that they've met Blackburn Rovers, who are wearing their blue and white halves, and playing from the left in the first half. Flags up already for an offside and the Oxford United fans have gone to the Darwin end of the ground Pills for handball against Shotton Garner was convinced it was referee pointed to his chest It was an awkward bounce for the defender, pursued there by Garner. Charles, nice flick, McDermott. It's a good cross, and Brock arriving! And a goal for Oxford United after only five minutes, and Kevin Brock met that beautifully. And a good move too by Oxford that. Charles began it by winning the header, and flicking it wide to McDermott. The cross was good and deep, and Brock got in ahead of Charles to finish it off. So a fine start for Oxford, who know if they win here today, they would go back to the top on a goal difference from Blackburn. So there's so much to savour in this match, in prospect, and Oxford have begun it in the best possible style. Charles, the newcomer, having a hand in the build-up. been plenty of uh, flu in the Blackburn camp this week and I must say they got caught absolutely cold there in Oxford's first dangerous attack Brock scoring with the header Brock Miller's got three to aim at there. The angle wasn't very good. And a quarter of an hour gone. Blackman Rovers here looking for an equaliser. This is Garner. Taken away from the keeper rather there by Langan. But a nice header by John Aldridge which has put uh, Brian McDermott in plenty of space. And Oxford are piling players forward here. One of them is Langan, four in the middle. Aldridge up with Geno, who didn't hold on, but was fouled. The Oxford bench must have appreciated the way David Langan there was involved, first in defence, in his own six-yard box virtually, and then making the extra man to supply the width on the right in attack. Here's Quinn. Miller. Oh, nice touch by David Langan. Well, that 
was good defending by Oxford because they'd been turned and that cross was an invitation for an attacker but Langen kept cool and steered it away. Header by Charles and Aldridge was pulled back surely there by Fazakali. An offence which in the eyes of some referees might merit a booking and I suspect Peter Willis is in that camp. That's the denial of the possible goal scoring opportunity by a piece of gamesmanship from the Blackburn captain who gets cautioned. Now when Blackburn were making their plans yesterday they were concerned about defending against free kicks from here in case Kevin Brock decides to curl one of which he's perfectly capable or indeed of driving one from there so the wall has to be right and the goalkeeper has to be alert but Brock doesn't supply the ammunition on this occasion Charles and Geno out to meet Aldridge Miller's gone inside and he's been found and it's going to come back for Quinn who skied it one of Blackburn's best opportunities of the half if not the best because Miller made a very clever run inside his fullback there he was well found and cut the cross back but Quinn perhaps got his head up a little bit there and lifted the ball over the bar 